All right, let's get into it. Now I had this idea that we don't have much build zone, right? So I want to maximize with another folding design. If I put this panel here, this is my max width, but I need at least three blocks space on the sides if I want to put ladders on. So I usually chop that off. Now, if we think I've got maybe two decks worth of space, I could make this longer if I fold the back down. So I'm going to build back of it first, and then we're going to move forwards to the front of the boat. Okay, so the end of this boat is going to be on hinges. I tried pivots, but I think they're going to rotate kind of funny and it's not going to work very well. So the idea is that this hinge falls down on its own. By setting it to low speed, low power, it's basically a dead hinge. doesn't need electricity. It'll just flop over on its own. Because all the weight is kind of hanging off the back, it naturally should want to go down. Then we're using hard points, so they will interact as it falls, and then it'll lock everything into place. And the only thing I really need to do is make sure that the interior is sealed on both compartments. And I'll use this compartment that falls down, put some hatches in the floor, and I'll store equipment in there. And then I just have to put a wall in here, and I can put my engine down below deck. I think that will work. Now for the bow of this ship, I want it to be quite flat and round at the very tip here. So I had thought maybe I could do a four, uh, one by four wedge to start with. And I kind of like that. I think I might change it again. It makes it look real flat and fat. Like it gives me this vibe of like being looking like a whale. But it means I have to sort of stretch things a bit through here and I only get one one by one wedge <laughs> it's just real real wide and that and very shallow curve as well I think what I've got to do here because I'm trying to match up I need to start at the bottom and I'll probably use this two by two pyramid I think or no I have to use the two by four to start with And then I can swap over to the 4x4 four four inverse. And see, it's, I'm going to have to raise that up a little bit to get started. And do I move? I need to move all of this forwards. So I'll just cut this out. And make sure to grab the other side. 
bring that forwards one so it lines up with this one by four wedge and then I'll just need to cut the deck or I probably don't even need to cut this if I want to make it easy so I can remember sort of what shape I'm going for I can just grab this it's the very tip of it cut it and I'll just move it up to the top and merge it back in and then we can delete the internal space and I'm most likely going to have to cut one of these sections these are um, this is a style that I like to put on most of my ships where I use five spaces and then I do a one by four wedge and it's got that kind of feel of like this is where the water can flow out of the side but it'll stop people from flying off the edge and it'll stop cargo from falling over as well and it just looks a bit industrial so usually you can just sort of chop out a whole section like this and don't forget that piece and then I can just cut that and move it the whole way back and that will give me more space to bring that bow up and if I need to or if I want to if I've got the space for it later I can just cut again and send it back out Okay, so I think I've got the hull sealed up. I have a spawn and... <laughs> it works. This is a bit weird. I wonder... I don't think I can fall into this hinge, so there shouldn't be any issues. It feels like maybe you go a bit slower over it. I might be able to move the hinge down as well, but I've still got my space to climb off get off and on the boat my ladder access there's a lot of weight down the back but it's working so that's good the reason that this hinge is working though is because it hinges off here but that that shouldn't matter because the rotation point is still only one block. I should be able to use like velocity pivots. All I have to do is make sure to merge them correctly and change the power. If you don't change the power, it's not going to move. That's better. These, um,. I was thinking maybe I could hide it under one of these support looking things, but it's a little bit off. Maybe if I'd make it a bit fatter? Oh no, I can't. Well, it's definitely easier to hide this. And it doesn't matter once it's connected to the hard points, it's locked in. Just make that look a bit nicer. You're never going to see that though, so it doesn't actually matter. Let's call this the rescue tug. Okay, and now we'll make the top area.
Okay, so for the... What do you call this? Cabin? I've decided to go with something a bit more sort of like a barge looking kind of thing. Now, I'm going to put a helm in here so we'll be standing. And the idea with this is that the captain can quickly get in and out of these two access doors here. They open outwards. And I've done that because this is quite a narrow space through here. And I needed these stairs because I've raised the floor inside here one block. And that lets me see um, pretty much good visibility over all the walls on all, all sides. I've done this trick with doors. Uh, these are door frames because they have this uh, little grey bit that sticks out on their model. It's, um, their hitbox hasn't changed, it's still only one by one block. But it lets the window sort of blend in and sit on something. And these windows are on the outside, so I can put anything I want on the inside, which is good. In the back here, I'll put down some seats. This should be enough space to probably, we could probably put a medical bed in here. Uh, and probably enough seats for like, I don't know, like eight, eight survivors. And then we've got a door, and this opens <laughs> into nothing. Because this part of the deck will be folded down when we spawn. And then on the front here, I was thinking there could be some kind of platform to raise it up so you can see over. Otherwise, I might put um, like a fluid cannon, like a water cannon on top of here so that it can fight some fires. I'll spawn it in and we'll see what it looks like. <laughs> it's hitting something. Something's gone wrong. That'll be the pivots. Something weird about the pivots. So, when it pivots down, it shouldn't be hitting the front part of the ship. It should just be free to fall down. So, I think it'll be something on the hinges. I did put these wedges in, but I don't think they would stop it. Let's hop down there and have a look. Oh, there it goes. Hmm. Not sure. Maybe we can just force it down if we need to. Look at that. We're all watertight. And we are a lot bigger than we were supposed to be. So now I just need a way to get down into the engine room. So I'll put a hatch on the front, I think. Put a hatch somewhere in here. Okay, so here's a fun trick for my mast. I want it to, I want to have quite a tall mast, but as you can see, I'm running out of build space. So I build it laying down, put it on some pivots, and then using a one by one microcontroller, I just have this constant on for value one going to a switch box. Um, I could just do this actually. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that. Here we go, one. What I initially wanted is that it would pulse a one, and it would rotate up, and then it would just stay up. But because the pulse was falling off, and then it was sending a zero, which is this state, it's trying to go back to laying down. If I just send it a constant number, it will rotate up and it will just lock in with the hard point and it will stay up. I think actually the motion of that going up is creating enough inertia to flick the back down. I'm pretty sure the back is just getting stuck on this uh, row of blocks that are on the same uh, Y value, X value as the pivots along the same line there.
Um, so this is a fun problem to have. Because my boat flips down, I don't have anywhere to put propellers or rudders. So I'm cutting out this little piece here and hopefully I can get away with putting two propellers on the back here. Very deceptive to look at this. And somewhere down below here I'll put a propeller. I want to use the large propeller, I don't want to use Azzy's. So you can see the propeller takes up quite a lot of space. And I can't move anywhere. I can move forwards a bit. All of the space along the back is closed up. So when it touches that, I think only this bottom one row is visible. I could put a little lip along there to help blend it in, I think. I might try that. It'd be like this. Right, because this two will line up with this two. So a propeller. I could use fluid jets. They are much smaller, but they're a lot more expensive and require a bit more um, power from the engine to actually operate. Now the azimuth thruster definitely could fit in the space, it's quite small, but we only get 40,000 units of force from that, whereas a large propeller would get 100,000, and I'm going to have two of them, so it's 200,000 versus 80,000. Okay, so for below deck, below deck we've got a big engine, 3x3, three three, three cylinder. I've opted for four sets of pumps for cooling. I don't know if that's going to be enough. We'll try and run it at a low RPS, and these will always just be pumping fresh seawater in and out, and hopefully it doesn't, doesn't overheat. We've got one ear pipe. You only need one ear manifold. So this just goes up through the floor a bit and then pokes out on the roof. Doesn't matter where that comes out. And then below that we've got fuel manifold which goes into the floor and up to my big tank. So I don't want to run out of fuel like I did last time. Now you might be thinking I could make a custom tank where you just build with blocks in this kind of space. Maybe it could be a bit lower or something. The volume is the same. The amount of fluid you get in a custom tank versus a bunch of these tanks is the same. But these tanks um, have a lower weight. So I'm saving weight by just having a lot of these clumped in here. I'm just using a normal starter motor and alternator system here. I actually like to use a clutch, one of these modular clutches with a motor. Um, stick that on the other end and put and then run a separate generator system. I don't trust these alternators. 
and then we've got power comes out and goes into both our propellers. By linking them up like this, we'll get an even amount of power distributed. Then we have all oh, this little gap here, we can put a wedge in. Propellers to our rudders, and then I think that will still close. Let's spawn it and have a look, see where the weight distribution is. It looks pretty good. Engine's all nice, fuel's all nice. We're not rocking too much, which is good. So I think we'll do the interior now, and then we can paint it. Up the front here by the fuel tanks, I've added a fuel pump system. I'll need to put a little floor and access thing to get in here. But basically, from the very front of the ship, we've got a fuel anchor or a fluid anchor, which will be connected to the fuel tanks, and then an electrical cable anchor just for recharging if I ever need to. So the pipe comes in, and then this system here is um, pretty easy to set up. So basically we've got pumps that can pump in either direction. It's basically just a loop. So if fluid is coming in, it will go to the right, down, and then down the pipe into the fuel tanks. If it's going out, it'll go up on the left and out. And then the valve in the middle is by default closed. And this will be the fuel, what do I call this? Fuel tank override. So you can open that. If there is damage to the electrical systems and neither of these pumps can be operated, you can open this and then you can pump in and out with an external pump. Um, so pumps like this, the electric pumps, they act as valves. If they're not getting an on signal, if they're not getting an on signal, then they're basically closed. So what I can do up here is put in a little instrument panel and I'll be able to put an up and a down arrow. So if I go one, I'll be arrow up. And I can say this is pump out because that makes sense to me. And then directly below it is instrument three, which would be arrow, and that can be pump in. And then I will do fuel. I don't know what the fuel level is going to be yet because I haven't counted all those up. And then I'll put a gauge here for the battery. So it's all in the same location, all on the same instrument panel. I've done a little bit of interior work for the um, pilot, for the captain. I put in a clock because I want to take out the HUD element that's up in the top right of the game. We've got a compass ball, and then I'm going to use this 1x3 display to put GPS coordinates on key to start the engine, a throttle lever, 
a bunch of switches that all do different lights and uh, backlights and I think that's actually all they do they just do lights and then we've got a dial for the speed and then I've got engine RPS engine temperature fuel and battery On the inside, I've got these two light switches here, and I put a little indicator on top. So the indicator will be on when the switch is off, and that's for the two lights inside here. The reason I do that is because you can quite easily see the indicator in the dark. So if you come in here and it's absolutely dark, you've got no torch and there's no light outside, you'll be able to find these little red um, indicators. And then looking around close to them, you'll know that the switches are there.
finally done all the logic. I think it's all the logic. I need to hide this microcontroller. I've been hiding the controllers down here at the back by the door because I've got this funny cutout thing. I'm just poking them in the holes here. It's a good trick. You can spin them around, use microcontrollers as walls. And I'll fill that in a bit, in a bit later. So right now I'm connecting all the electricity. And I think I don't need it connected to a lot of these things. I need to send some up to this light. We've got another light. Another light. And then connect that into the GPS. I put a relay in there and I don't need it. I find it's a lot easier to trace back where your electrical systems go when you do this kind of spider web system. The other way is just connect everything to the battery. <laughs> if you had multiple batteries though, you might, um, if you did it this way and you had multiple batteries connected at different points, you might be able to take damage on one of the batteries and keep going. But this is just definitely easier to see what's going on. These just in case. Oof, okay, I think that's it. So let's have a look what I did in the cockpit area. I've got the helm. I got rid of the instruments I wasn't using. So I should have RPS, temperature, uh, fuel remaining, battery, and then a bunch of lights, throttle key, speed. I don't have a speed. Speed sensor. I'll just hide it in here. Ooh, should I? Should I leave that? I can just put it over here, I think. That's a bit better. Now you can't see it there. And I'll need my speed controller. And we'll do knots. Up the top, we've got the clock, the compass. The display will read out our GPS coordinates. I've put some couches in the back here. I tried to put a medical bed in. It meant I had to cut down this couch into a, only a two-seater. And also because this is too wide and the bed is three wide, you had this little sticking out bit. And it looked a bit weird, so I thought I'd just take it out. Um, the other thing I need is a winch because we want to be towing that other boat back and I want to get a good winch, which means I want one of these big ones at least, a large winch. I could just put it on the deck. Maybe there's a better place I could hide it. I could put it in the bottom here. Let's do a test and see if everything turns on. Missing required diesel. Oh no. <laughs> I might have all the fuel in this ship. 3,800. That's pretty good. Okay, spotlights. They didn't turn on, did they? Oh, they're facing the wrong way as well. Navigation should none of this is working. I think the engine turned on. It is reporting. Oh, I should put some lights down here as well. Let's see, do the rudders work? Rudders are working. Uh, the clutch isn't working. Ok, 
Okay. Oh, back we go. Ah, I know. This is should be based off engine RPS, not throttle input. Oh, okay, it's going. I don't want it to get out of the build zone because it'll be a pain to get back in. Now, the things that I've forgotten, gearboxes, <laughs> we've got no reverse gear. And which means we can also gear up a bit. So I'm going to just go straight on to one, and I should put a instrument on here. Probably use this one. Reverse indicator, this is channel two. For the channels, I've just gone the top row is one to six, and then the next row is seven to twelve. So if I can feed something into this chain, and this is where I've goofed, I can't send two signals through. I have to pick up the chain somewhere. Make sure to connect the electricity. So what I should do with these controllers is make them wider. It's gone through the wall a little bit. And then the one behind it, same thing, I'll spin it around, I'll bring it outside first so that when I expand it, it doesn't destroy anything. Add a composite out. And then we'll put it there. Okay, so now everything's correct. And what we're going to do is all those go into each other. This comes over here. It goes into this controller, out of this microcontroller, into this other microcontroller, and then back out and back to here. And now we can just pick any one of these spots. Um, I think it's probably better to do... This is a number, but this this makes sense to do it on this one. This is the controller that's sort of picking up all the signals and outputting a value to those dials or the gauges. If I go reverse, reverse, then I can send a reverse input, and I need this one. And... It's on channel 2, so I'm going to make the start channel 2. Ooh, and that'll work. What have I forgotten? I need a winch and I need some rope anchors.
and a winch. I should get a winch. I want to use the large winch. I kind of don't want to just bonk it down on here though. And we need an instrument panel to control this anyway. Do I want to put it somewhere beside it maybe? Maybe I can do on each side, but then I'll only put the controller on one side. You can use wedges to kind of give it a little platformy looking thing, something that's holding the winch on. Maybe I'll put a door down the bottom and then it can have a little, it gives a little bit of an angle going up. And now I need a winch controller, which I have done a tutorial on. So I already have that saved. Super easy. Just connect these up now. And then we've got winch signal, which is this on off output, winch up, winch down, winch length. And then try and figure out which these are. So this will be winch down because it's going out away from the boat instrument two is probably winch length and this winch is 150 meters channel two channel three will be winch up coming back towards the boat channel three and then winch signal i say winch signal instead of power because electricity and power are words that get interchange so much it's just super confusing of what you actually mean so let's check that controller so it should be up is channel one which is not i've got it this way down is channel one up is channel three the signal i have on channel four and channel two is the length we go now let's paint this i want to paint it orange because it's a rescue boat Okay, finally, we'll go and try one of these missions. There's going to be some spots where it's not fully painted. Let's turn everything on, maybe not the spotlights. Oh, it leans a bit. It is turning. I think there's actually, yeah, it's real close. Oh, I didn't add a fire extinguisher. I did add a fire extinguisher. Oh, we're leaning. <laughs> our RPS is 6, and our speed is 22. It's another slow boat. Why was the other one... It is pulling up, so it must really be trying. And we turn on... I have spotlights on, don't I? Oh, there we go. Oh, gone too far. I'm gonna have to hop over there and... 
try and sort it out. I think there was a letter here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Not a very good letter. Someone's dead. Oh, no. If you have a um, water cannon on your boat, you'll be able to put this fire out a lot faster because it just pushes so much more water. You won't be able to get these internal fires unless they're also poking outside somewhere. Is that a fire? Yeah. So I'm looking for little orange dots. Um, deceased means dead, cannot be revived. Oh, I'm gonna be on fire. This one here. Oh, it's floating right in the middle. Okay, deceased. So we've got two people out the back. I think most of them are deceased. I saw one on the front. follow us and we should just be able to hop onto the boat so we get money for putting out the fire um how many people are here three casualties okay and it's deleted the other three that died And the other one's just over there. Yeah, this is the problem with fire extinguisher. We can't refill it. I think there's a yeah, there's another fire on this boat. This boat is just put out the fire and rescue. And they're deceased. <laughs> Gonna, we might not make it with the fire extinguisher. Okay, hold on. This boat is sinking. Deceased. Deceased. Oh, wasn't there someone else? If there was someone inside, they're going down with the ship. We've got two people from that boat. Um. Oh well. We'll check the hospital island while we're here. <laughs> Everyone's standing on tables. And there's crates. What is this? A couch? Some kind of cabinet? The tsunami would have come through and pushed everyone around. Let's check for crates. There's sometimes crates back here. I wish they would stop following me. Yes. Right in the door. Okay, I'm going to close this door. And now they're all trapped inside. Oh wait, I need to sleep because it's so dark. Good enough. Actually, it's probably not good enough. It's probably good enough. Alright, so Hospital Island's pretty good for crates. 
Um, you've got to check the forests a bit. Okay, it looks like maybe there's only one crate on the hospital island this time. But now we can set out to recover the second boat. I see it. It's behind the oil rig. It looks really cool from a distance, like some kind of sports boat. We'll go underneath the oil rig, I think. to spin around. But don't worry, I know what I'm doing. check the fire extinguisher situation. Hmm. Yep, that's got more. Uh, what else is here? I need to recharge that flashlight. Put that back. Get a rope. Let the winch out a bit. And make sure we point it in the right direction. <laughs> It'll be alright once we get pointed the right way. Alright, we're off. This is gonna work. That engine temperature is a bit worrying. I, I wasn't sure if the... Oh, maybe the pumps aren't on. No, none of the pumps are on. Okay, so this boat currently has no cooling. Uh, I just forget which door I go in and out a lot of the time. So, for all those people complaining about modulars and cooling, you don't even need it. Okay, so I think we just need to get it close, and then we should be able to take it to the workbench. And remember to grab the torch off it. Try this. Um, I'll disconnect the rope. Yes, okay. Need to get up onto it. To get my torch. Oh, I should just use the ladder. Okay, flashlight. Okay, so I've got twenty-eight thousand. 55. <laughs> there was a lot of money tied up in that boat. And I'm going to take this one back as well. It's been a rough four hours to get this boat going. And we've got a couple of things. We need to paint 
a um, little bit slightly tinges. I could do some deck decoration. And I think a gate on the back that can go up and down would be good so I don't fall off. And maybe some gates on the side so I don't fall off there either. And there's a block up here that needs painting. And the spotlight on the roof. I'm not sure why that hasn't rotated. It might be fused in a weird way. And we could do some decoration in the back here as well with the equipment. And I could also add a firefighting hose up on the front. I, just, I like to use just a fluid anchor and a hose and then pump seawater rather than using the fluid cannon. I feel like the hose is just better. You can run all the way around the ship with it. And it just it shoots the same distance anyway. So, yeah. Anyway, I'll see you next time.